Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. Today we implement something called a total playtime. Now what this total playtime does is every time we actually loot, uh, boot the game, we get the time you've played in the whole actual session, in the whole save file. So as you can tell right now, when we first started the game, we already played on our save file for 5 seconds. Now if I close it, boot it back up, we're at 15. So we played for a total of 15 seconds using this very save file. And this is going to be useful for us when we, whenever we do the abilities and whenever we do the research and also some other cooldowns. So maybe you can only play add every 20 minutes or something like that. But the application is uh, need to be active. So that's what we implement today, guys. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so what is going on today? We are going to do the global time thing. So it is a fairly fast video, it's like barely like 10 lines, but it is a concept that we pretty much need for the abilities and also the research. Since we're already doing the research, I decided we, we should implement the uh, total time right now so we can actually use it and finish the research, close it up, um, it can look a little bit more nice, then we can go ahead and move on with the abilities when we're done. But uh, yeah, so basically what we need is to be able to tell how long have we been playing this game. So say we actually start counting. This is the first time you actually open up the game. So you go like 1, 2, 3, 4. Then you stop the game completely. And you start over with that, that same counter. And then it goes like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You don't start again from 0. But now, of course, whenever you open up the application, if you're using the time.time, .time, this is going to give you um, the amount of seconds since the application has begun. And that is something we really can't use, because every time you reboot the application or you restart it, you're going to start up at zero, and we don't need that. We need to keep track of uh, how long have you actually been playing the game for things such as, well, the research. If you start a research that takes one hour or more, then... Um, I mean, you're going to have some kind of logic that you have to wait one hour during the actual game, and that would suck. And if you close it in the meantime, then you start over at zero. So uh, that's why we need some kind of global total play time. And it's something we're going to be doing in sort of the tower script. So everybody has access to it, the research manager has access to it, the um, ability manager will have access to it. And let's actually see how we implement this. It is fairly easy to implement. Alright, so around here, anywhere really, we are going to declare three new fields. First one I will call public float last save. Put this in a set get. I'll make another one just below it that I'll call play time since save. And the other one is actually going to be a. Um, a property. So you know how we have these set and get all the time? Well this one is not going to be a set so nobody can actually set this value it is going to be reset every time we call it. Um, and it's actually not going to have a value it is only going to have a return property. So you only type in get like this you open up the curly brace again and this is where you put the return statement. So what we are going to be returning whenever somebody call the tower.instance.totalPlayTime is the time dot time minus last save you put that in parentheses and you do plus playtime since save this way you've got this value um, that you save in your in uh, that we'll save in the registry that is the time before we actually open up the application before we actually hit the save button you get this amount of time so say four seconds then plus the actual time of the application minus the last save, save which is going to give you the uh, time in between the last save and now. And that's what we get, so it's really simple. If we move over to our save function or our load function, we now need to put them somewhere, right? So all we're really going to be doing in our load local is say um, playtime since save is equal to player pref that get float and now we give it a um, a key now what key could we give it 
we could give it total playtime key. Doesn't really matter as long as we use it for the save as well. So I'll be taking this key, copy it. Then we can now head over to our save local. And I'm putting them at the very top of the function. It's not like the rest, but uh, this one is like a single line. So I think it's appropriate. And uh, in the save, we're going to be calling the player pref that set float. We set total playtime, which is what we just saved in our clipboard. And um, the value, so we don't have to calculate it, we can simply call it total playtime. And this is going to calculate it when we ask um, when we ask the tower instance to actually calculate it. So during this, save local function. And uh, of course, when we do save, there is something really important you must not forget. Is say last save is equal to time dot time. Else we'll end up having some value that just grow up too fast. And guys, that is pretty much all we needed to implement to have this. Let's, let's test this out. So over in my start, I'll just find a nice little niche over here. Debug.log. And I'll call... I will be calling the total playtime. Oops. Well, total playtime. And then total playtime. Like this. So we're loading the value first, and it should actually put a value inside of um, playtime since save, and that's what we're going to get inside of here. So let's actually test this out. I'm launching this for the first time using my preloader. Down here, total playtime zero. Let's actually close this up, boot it again. I'm at 4.2 seconds. Now if we just wait, say, another 6 seconds, uh, that should do the trick. We open it up again, we're at 12. And you see we just keep incrementing depending on how long we actually stayed in the game. Now of course, if we go ahead and we just, let's say boot it again, we're at 20 seconds. If I do the reset save that I miss because I clicked too fast, reset save, then I go ahead and start this again. It's the times since I actually hit the reset save button. So I don't know why it does that. I keep missing my thing. So if I hit reset save and I quickly close the game, I'll be at 1.5 second or 3. Yeah, I really suck at this. Anyway, so we've got this working. We know that this works. We can remove our debug.log. And that's actually fixed what we had in the last episode. That is, inside of the research manager, we had to find a way to actually find the global time or the total play time. Let's actually remove this. We've got our value now. It is under the D tower that instance total playtime. Now this way we actually know if the research is completed or not. And guys, that is a really small episode, but that's all we had to do today to implement this total playtime. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy, I hope you learned something. And um, again, if you have any question or comment, you can leave them in the comment section just below the video or the Facebook page, which is in the description again below the, video, below the actual video. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next episode.